Hello and welcome to Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. This is MH Kira, otherwise um, known as Z Ivan Kira or just Ivan Kira. And on Monster Hunter 4 U, um, my character's name is Rakuhara. You may have bumped into me once or twice, I don't know, but yeah. So let us begin. This is going to be my very simple let's play playthrough of um, Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. And as you can see, the name right there, it's in Japanese, but it reads Rakuhara, which is the same name as in the character that I have on my Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. I want to keep it, well, the same. So yeah. So basically, I skipped the character creation uh, intro and tutorials, and I would like to do it in more of a my own personal way, like I'll go through it when I play the game itself. And I agree that the game does quite a good job at doing all these introductions already, but yeah, just I'd just like to do it with a little bit more personal touch. So, in general, these videos um, are going to be more of the uh, interesting hunts, and uh, yeah, so let's just get to it right now. Alright, so I'm not going to read out most of these conversations, I guess, unless, unless you guys want me to. So, let us begin with the One Star Village quest. So I'm gonna only work with the, um, what do you call the key quests, and in doing so, we will be doing the more interesting hunts. So this is the traveling peddler. Yeah. Oh, I'll be introducing the village um, soon as we go along. Just making sure that I have nothing in my inventory, but it's okay because it's just a village one star quest. I don't think I'm gonna be taking too much damage, I hope. So in general, yes, this is the introduction to the... What is the map of... Ah, crap, I can't remember what's the name of this map. It's been so long since I played Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. Speaking of which, Monster Hunter Portable 3rd is the very first Monster Hunter series that um, I started out with. And of course, it made me sink in so much time and uh, subsequently, I bought Monster Hunter for you as well. So, oh. anyway, we are currently at the the location Pigs. Yeah. So this is the Pigs in the day. And just gonna get map, first aid kit, rations. Uh, wait, why did I get wet stones for? Uh, whatever. Just gonna get. Yep. Um, as you can see, I'm playing the bow, and initially when I started out playing Monster Hunter Portal World Third as well. I made the bow for a little bit and then I switched over to the long sword and I tried out with the sword and shield and I basically played quite a number of different weapons just to try oh my god I just missed that so terribly yeah the controls for bow for monster the tree and for you is slightly diffi diff diff different not difficult like you can you can change it in for you to make it much more intuitive, but in portable third, not as much. Yeah. I mean, oh my god, the jaggy is so small I can barely keep it without shooting past his head. Oh, stop moving. There we go. Must pay attention to hit to hitting it at a critical distance as well. And yes, carving. Okay, so in general. Um, I would like to cover little things as to how to be a better hunter. I'm not saying that I'm like MLG Pro or anything, just in general little tips and tricks as to what each monster is like, their morphology, their behavior, and hopefully this will help not just myself, in reminding myself and like um, even the veteran players out there, gentle reminders, and new hunters, what to look out for, what to watch out for. Things like that. So, and once again, I repeat, I am not some insane pro. I don't do like insane fast speed runs and things like that. No, I'm just a regular hunter, just you know, having fun, doing stuff. That's about it. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, he's not dead. Uh, and he'll be the second of five. Gotcha. Are you dead? Yeah, you're dead. Okay. 
So yeah. Did I I believe I was talking somewhere some way and I lost track, but uh oh well. My memory is terrible. I mean I have some stuff that I initially wanted to talk about written down on a piece of paper in front of me, but looks like I've covered most of them. So yeah, let's just go on with the game. And yes, tip one, tip number one of the day is gather. As a newbie hunter, you'll be obviously, um, you know, lacking in a lot of resources. And as such, it is essential that you collect anything that you see along the way. And that being said, I didn't bring my old pig eggs nor my bug net, so I could I can't catch bugs on my ores, which is not very helpful, and I just missed that miserably. And I'll just slash him and slash him, ha! Huh? So yeah. The bow is an amazingly fun weapon, I like it a lot. The playstyle is very different compared to, uh... Okay, it's not... I wouldn't say it's very different, but every weapon has their unique playstyles, and I quite appreciate the bow's one. Yes, indeed. Oh yes, carving even the tiniest of monsters is helpful, because you never know when you might need their parts at some point. Yep. Yeah, critical. Alright, basically some of you may be wondering what is this critical distance thing I'm talking about. Is that, um, when you're using bows, there's a certain sweet spot distance where if you fire your arrows from, and when it hits the target, at that particular distance it deals bonus damage. So yes, you as much as possible try to have your arrows be at the appropriate distance when you fire. And that is extremely important especially when you fight um, bigger monsters in the future because that would really matter. Oh, mushrooms are back. Didn't I just harvest them just now? Oh yeah, they are harvested. Oh wait, I forgot. I needed one thing. Yukumo wood. That is really really important in uh, upgrading the basic Yukumo weapons and every upgrade is a uh, it counts every upgrade counts basically the little increase in damage it may not seem significant at the start but it's still it's still something it's still something yeah so yeah you got uh, what insect husk I didn't know you could get it from these but okay yes there we go Yukumo wood mm hmm how many more times can we carve? Apparently, we can carve way more times than normal because of Spirit's Whim. It's a skill that you get innately from the Yukumo set, which is very helpful for beginners, if you ask me. So you basically can carve, um, not carve, but you can gather more resources from the same resource point. Like if you were usually able to gather, like let's say, maybe two honey from this, um, get a twice, not two honey, get a two times from this particular spot with Spirit's Whim, you should be able to get a more than that, like three times, four times, and some even way more, depending on your luck. So yes, oh, more wood. Why not? I hope, yeah, nothing's gonna attack me right now. The game doesn't usually bully you that much that quickly but there are times where the game will throw you into a, a ton of shit and <laughs> you have no choice but to improve as a hunter to get out of it alive. Yep, pretty brutal. Alright, time to find the last few, the last, the last Juggy. Where would it be? Hmm. Oh. Stamina is getting low, just pop on a pop a ration. Ration, ration, the uh, pronunciation differs wherever you, whatever type of English you're speaking, but you guys get the idea. Okay, it's not here. But you can get us some. No, not here. This is the eggs. Yeah, here's the dung. So, yes. In Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, you get to have your own farm, and um, dung is useful as fertilizer to grow herbs, and 
As compared to the Wyve Wy Wyporium, Wy the I I can't remember. But basically, as as compared to the trader in um, Monster Hunter for you, you actually have to farm for your materials in a typical sense of farm. Yes, and uh, just gonna try and take out this last Jaggy. Yes, before any of the others get in the way. Okay, and yeah, um, one more tip. If you want to skip that final ending cutscene where it's just, like, you know, shows you the monster dying and writhing in agony as you finally kill it, um, you can just press the select button on your PSP if you still play this on your PSP, or the equivalent button. In this case, it's a. Uh, yeah, uh, on the controller, it's my back button, so yeah. You go more wood, yes. The more the merrier. In fact, I think honey is more valuable right now because potions. Oh, it's very important for you to. Well, not important per se, but it is advisable that you know what materials are needed in some basic crafting. Like, for example, potions are made up of blue mushrooms and herbs, and mega potions are basically a combination of honey and potions. So. These are important for your survival at any point of time when you're playing the game. Quest clear. Sweet. Send item to item box. Paint berries, useful always. Juggy skills, armor spheres. Yes. I do want all of these. Okay. So, moving on to the next one. Now loading. The, the loading screen is so adorable. Checking on the egg again. Aww, nothing found. Basically, this hot spring egg here is uh, one of the pride of Yukumo Village. So every time after you finish a quest, you can always come back here, hit square, and if you're lucky, you may get a uh, hot spring egg. And basically, it what it does is it recovers all the red portion of your health when you take damage, and increases your recovery speed. So, basically, this is the farm. Um, I can go visit it right now. It is uh, looking kind of empty because I am still scrub. There we go. That's the item box. That's um, where you mine rocks. That is the bug, bug catching area. That's the fishing point. The fishing pier. And this is my farm. And last but not least, there should be. Where's the mushroom farm? Oh, there in that shed. So yes. Okay, the cat has information to tell us. This is the Yukimo farm. Here you find there is what you find is yours, okay? Many kind of facilities and uh, they're all useful, so make good use of them. The small box can be used for small items, uh-huh. And uh, you'll find the field, the inside trapper, uh-huh. So at the back there's the mining point, yes. And there's a fishing net where you can get a fish, uh-huh. Uh yeah, so you can only ref sort of refresh the area every time after you finish a quest. And yeah, you can train your feline comrades here as well. So, speak with the young man outside, um, and he will be able to add new facilities. And you will purchase these um, this additional facilities using Yukumo points. So in the meantime, try testing out for yourself. Okay, no problemo. So, I don't think I'm gonna bore you guys with these, or should I? Okay, I can make it quick, I guess. Alright, so... What are you gonna do is... I'm gonna choose fertilizers. And the best fertilizer, of course, is dung. See, it instantly levels the roll from 1 to 3. And, oh wait, let me just... Okay, this, this is good. Oh wait, I need, I need to put this. Oh my god, why am I... Um, I guess I'll toss in the herb. Because, why not? So basically, this, this row of uh, plants here will give me herbs when it grows. And uh, my mushroom farm is not um, set up yet. And here, the cat, I can change bait, and different bait catches me different kind of insects. It's as simple as that. And to boost the bonuses, I use honey. So I, I only have buck perfume right now, which is, uh, yeah, that's all I have. I can choose to use honey, which I won't, but um, there's nothing for me to gather yet. Gather yet. 
my tongue is blah, 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 blah. I don't, it's, it's just getting stuck in my mouth. So I can yep hoist the net and oh, fish. Let's see, send the box. Oh, nice. Unlike Monster Hunter for you, um, you can actually cook fish in Monster Hunter Portable Third. And when I say cook fish, I uh, yes, literally cook fish, as in. Like, you know how you make well done steaks? It's the same concept. But instead, you cook fish. And what does fish do is exactly the same as um, what I said earlier about the Yukumo Hot Spring Egg. It basically recovers the rate portion of your health whenever you take damage. And as in, after you take damage, you have the rate portion of health that regenerates slowly over time. And if you eat the fish, it instantly regenerates all of it and increases your recovery rate for a short period of time. So this is the young man, the farm manager that the cat was talking about back there. I can renovate and uh, basically improve the farm, but um, obviously I do not have enough points for that. So yeah, ooh, Mega BBQ Speed, that, that's really fun actually. So point exchange, I can exchange um, certain items here to get points, and yeah, um, I just explained the point system to you, so... This is um, basically the shopkeeper selling the typical items, and this one sells the basic equipment, yes, weapons and armor, which we do not need for now. And this old man here, he will upgrade your weapons, aha, uh -huh, and make the much better equipment. Alright, alright, yes, 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 I know what you do. Now, I want you to upgrade my bow! Can you do that? Yes! The Yukumo bow. So, upgrading it would basically increase his attack by 20, which is not too shabby. Alright, that's all. And this guy here, the older feline, he's in charge of creating feline gear. Yes, um, feline equipment essentially. And this woman here is where I get felines from. So, okay, there are many different kinds of cats here. Weapon only, melee and bomb, all the different attack styles, and their um, loyalty levels. It, no, loyalty levels always start at around two hearts. Um, the lineage is basically the color of the cat, and attack style is um yeah literally the attack style. So the character, basically as you can see, character pacifist will always give an attack style of does not attack. So yeah, different characters would have different kind of uh, attacking patterns, and it is up to you to find out what kind of attack styles you like, and you can work towards it. Uh. Distance. So I actually like. Huh. Huh. Hey, I actually like a combination of like melee and bomb or melee and boomerang. Bombs are actually pretty damn fun. <laughs> I will be honest here. Bombs. It is really, really hilarious when you see this cute little cat carrying this gigantic bomb above his head and just running right at the monster and going kaboom! Like it does a pretty decent amount of damage and I've seen it break parts of monsters before. So, and not to mention that if you're playing as a ranged character, like a bow or bowgun user, you'll be safe from the bomb explosion, so why not? I guess, um, meh, I guess I'll go with the weapons, uh, melee bomb, um, Bombs and boomerang, let's just do this. Yes. Okay, so we'll come back after another quest and she would have a new set of a new set of felines waiting for us. And so this shall be a short episode. And uh, I guess I should call it a day here. And Yes, it's basically just an introduction and um, I'll see you again soon and we'll be attempting more quests in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. Thank you very much for watching. Well, if you like what you see, just uh, you can leave a like below, you can comment, give me constructive feedback, definitely appreciate it. And um, see you again soon. Signing out.